man says that it's impossible, when your mind says that it's impossible, when all the circumstances around you saying it's impossible, God is saying yes. Uh, God is saying it is possible with me. It might be impossible with man, but I want you to know it's not impossible with God. would testify to bring glory to their king. How I love to hear the stories, how the Lord brought victory. But how happy I'll be when eternally I'll hear the untold stories. Untold stories of His grace that He poured out. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall sit, set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee of thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the word of God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We praise you, Jesus. Lord, for your word, we thank you, Lord God, that you, Lord, are looking and you're calling your church, Lord. And we want to be, Lord, your hands and your feet. And God, Lord, that we want to send forth the message, hallelujah, of your salvation plan. Lord, we know, God, that you are in control. And Lord God, we know that this day is going to come, Lord. And we want, Lord God, to be doing all that we can, Lord, until you come. Lord, equip us with your word, Lord. And God, let your spirit reign and rule in our lives tonight, Lord. Just flow through this place. And Lord God, most of all, I pray that your word would find good ground. Lord, I thank you for it. I give you praise. I give you glory. And I ask that you'd use me tonight. Lord God, as we think, Lord, of, of Lord, of wonderful God, that we can celebrate Christmas and all that it means to us, Lord. Because without it, Lord, we know, God, that we wouldn't be redeemed tonight. But, Lord God, you have given us life and that more abundantly. And I just pray, God, that we would take 
what you have given us, and we would give it to this dark world. I give you praise. I give you glory in Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. Amen. I think of this as this the parable of the sheep and the goats, as Jesus declared it here. And I want you to know, with everything that's going crazy in the world, it's wonderful to know, yes, in some ways, I feel that if we're prepared and we're wet, ready, because I, it's a wonderful thing to know that you're saved. There's nothing, you know, keeping you back. But, you know, every day... Uh, we want to draw closer to the Lord. I know I have not arrived. You have not arrived. Well, there's all more that we can be doing for the Lord. And I, I truly believe that the spirit of, of, that we're living in today, the spirit that's in the world, and now that, you know, it's, it, it hasn't stopped. What has it been? Two years, almost two years since the talk of this virus and now they're talking about another one coming our way another variant and what it's going to do and i think of really all the things that have happened and how it's you know really been a hurting on the nation itself but it's really been a hurting on the church um you, you really I, I heard a minute i was pastor stevie that really brought forth the word one time I heard and how he talked about you think that in this time that what the things that we are seeing, the things that we've seen in the past, that it would really draw men to the Lord. But really it has not drawn people to the Lord. And I think, Lord, what is it going to take to really stir us up for the things of God or to receive what God has? Because really, since this thing has happened, it, I feel that it's made uh, less of the church than more of the, what the church should be. And I, I mean, even here, some of the things that, you know, we haven't come back fully to where it should be. But it all had to do with this stinking virus. And, and I thank Lord and all that uh, you have done in our lives. But here tonight we can see that really men's hearts aren't where they should be. I, I say, Lord, I want to have a heart every day to be your servant. To be a witness in a dark world. And I know, you know, that it's not just. Um, works that we are saved. We know that. Um, real quick, turn to, if you read there in Titus, um, if you find it, if you don't, I can read it here. I was reading there in Titus. What a powerful scripture there in chapter 3. It says, put them in mind to be subject to principalities, to powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to, ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Can you think back just a little bit? And we were disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice. I think it's good for us, though, to remember where we came, you know, where we've come from. To think where, you know, the, where the enemy had us, and now we've been set free. Uh, envying, hateful, and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared. Hallelujah. Not, and right here, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Hallelujah. By the washing and regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. See, I believe we're doing a good work here tonight because we're in the house of the Lord. Uh, I think, too, uh, you know, Connie and Troy, they pick up Bill every service. I think that is a blessing. I was just sharing with someone, they, 
that, you know, or my, I guess it would be, let's see, is it my great uncle, it would be Uncle Earl, um, my grandmother's brother, that, you know, I found Betty, uh, or Kathy Miller put some pictures that were Betty's, and I, I never saw, I saw some pictures though of the, you know, church being built, but these pictures that were in there on Sunday, I never really saw the beginning part. I mean, really, they encased grandma, my great grandmother's house around to build this little this little chapel because the house was just teeny tiny and I really still don't know all the history of it. Um, some were, I know Nancy and Janie um, and Clarence, um, a relation of mine that doesn't live around here, but they had some memories of some things and that I I really don't, you know, even when Dad started the church here, I was just a baby. I was just born. So the beginning parts I really don't remember. But I I think back at the beginnings and they were talking about Earl and all the work that he did here. And um, they said something because I shared him on Facebook, and I think it was his son that said, "Boy, he, he really did a lot of work." And I wanted to make clear to him, I said, "He's receiving his reward right now. He's receiving his reward of all the work that was done in this church." And and thank God because there's so many times I, I come in this place as. She, you know, Tanya is expressing the presence of the Lord, the sweet presence of the Lord that was in this place Sunday. And I thank God for that. I thank God for His Holy Spirit. I thank God for the opportunity that we're here tonight. And we can feast on the manna. We can feast on the Word of God. We can receive of those blessings. And then we can take those blessings and we can give them to someone. Because that's what the gospel is all about. It's not holding it to yourself. It's giving it away. That's the message of Christmas too. I mean, we, we you know, I don't know how it all started where we give each other presents. But we do know that we, we know he, he is the greatest gift of all. He has given us life eternal. And to think that we can give the light, we can give the hope to someone that is hurting. We can pray for someone that is sick. And I was just the other night, I ran, in, and ran into someone. I did not know them, but I, I know she was taking treatment. She had cancer, stage 3 cancer. I was able to share with her, hey, I had stage 3 cancer a long time ago. And I just went through surgery and everything's A-OK. -okay. Hallelujah. And I was able to lay my hands on her and I said a prayer for her. Hallelujah. We have the hope of this gospel that we can believe and that we can trust in him and we can share it to someone that's in need tonight. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that he's the one that's in charge of things. And I was just thinking the other day, uh, I wanted to, to reach out again to the almonds because I know as as um, Troy shared too with uh, Sister Almond having some health issues too and really uh, facing some things there, just alone, panic attacks. And I, I really believe these things are of the enemy. And it, it is a spirit of torment to try to put fear. Uh, I, I have a little taste. <laughs> I went through something in my life. And uh, as I said, as a little girl, yes, I, I was al always fearful. Um, but that when God called me, I didn't know it was just to take my dad's place, but it was two years before, and it was a God thing, but I truly believe God allowed me to experience some things in my life, and it, it was very challenging at times, where I was really leaning on the Word of God, and I knew that it was only God that could lift me out of it. It was only God that could give me the peace. Because, see, there's nothing in this world that can satisfy you and give you true peace. 
I, I just saw someone the other day, you know, they were talking about how they're looking, you know, I think I need another tattoo. And I thought to myself, the world is looking for all kinds of other things that only God can give you a peace and to give you satisfaction. And that's just one example. There's so many things that people are looking for and it only gives them a temporary fix. But we have the true word. We have the vine. We have Jesus. Hallelujah. We have the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the wonderful counselor. He is that bright morning star. He is the lily in the valley. Hallelujah. When you're going through the trial or the tribulation, I want you to know I have a Savior that I can lean upon. I have a Savior that will give me peace uh, and he will lift me up. And I don't want to keep it to myself but I want to give it to someone who's in need hallelujah God is looking for that in our lives and it's only by his grace I said to Shannon and I was talking and I said it's really only by his grace that we can do anything Lord give us your grace give us your mercy turn to Ephesians chapter 2 His grace and His mercy that keeps us. It says in chapter 2, verse 8. Let me get it here. Chapter 2, verse 8. It says, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, this is something that's very important because we know that it's not just, there's a lot of people that are trying to do good works to get to heaven. And we know that that just don't cut it with God. Uh, it, it's through Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's receiving Him as your Lord and Savior. Living for Him. And, and it's believing that He is able. It's not anything of good works. But I truly believe that when Christ comes in your life, there's going to be a change. There's going to be a different attitude. Isn't it something today? Really just the attitude of the world. But really it has crept into the church. We've got to watch our attitude that we keep the right spirit. That we are the spirit of Christ. Christ that laid down his life for you and me. And I want to be that same kind of person. I want to have that kind of love for people. And I, I that's now that's one thing I always remember Dad saying about when it comes to God. It always evolves around people. And, you know, uh, you've got to deal with people. And, and you've got to have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what's going to lead you in the right direction. Amen? And yes, we're not all perfect. We might not get it all right. I remember one time just doing a Christmas program. And I, I really forget what I did wrong or um but I left someone out of the picture. And boy, boy, did I get, I, and, and then he, Dad, I remember him looking at me. He says, now, do you see? He goes, do you see now just one little thing like that? How, you know, that's, he was trying to explain to me what it's like to be a pastor. Because there are things that come your way and you need the Lord. And I say every day, God, I knew when I stood behind this pulpit, I knew in, in one moment I thought, dear Lord, first of all, to ever fill my father's shoes. And really, I can't fill my father's shoes, but I can be used of God. I can be his servant. And we were sharing here of all the people. It was wonderful to see this place so full on Sunday, to see everybody here. I, I recall someone saying... Um, they would refer to the people, they called them the C's and the E's, meaning Christmas and Easter. That's about when you saw them was at Christmas time and Easter. 
but we know that no matter what, these doors are open, and we want them to have the opportunity because you never know when God get a hold of someone's heart and touch their life and to pour out his spirit upon them. And this is the scripture that, that Jesus declared where he talked about when, when you, it says, for I was hungered and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was listening to, I like it, the little Christmas song that I've only heard Johnny Cash sing it, but it's called The Christmas Guest. And it talks about how this man, you know, the Lord came to him and said that he was going to come and he was going to visit him on Christmas Day. And it talks in that song kind of like a, a little re resuscitation. And he, and he says that he waited for the Lord on Christmas Day. And it talks on there how, uh, you know, a lady came to his house and she needed, a, you know, she needed something. And the little uh, child got lost. And, and he needed, you know, help to find his way home. I think it was like three visits. And he realized that the Lord hadn't come. And he went to the Lord that night in prayer and said, you were to visit me. And the Lord revealed to him and said, hey, I came to you. I kept my word. I was that little girl that was lost. Uh, I was that woman that came and needed something to drink. See, a lot of times we think that, you know, we're not doing anything, but just the little things that we can do to reach out and to give the love of Jesus Christ. We need to reach out and to give that hope that you have. Aren't you thankful that you have? Have the hope. I know hallelujah the Christmas story and it's not about Santa Claus and the reindeer but it's about Jesus Christ the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Hallelujah. I wanted to um, send something as I, I didn't finish about the almonds. I wanted to send something over to them. I, I, today I took over a little, just a little something to give them in a card. And if they would have answered, I would have, you know, offered a prayer to pray for them. I didn't get anyone at the door. So I just left the gift there on the porch. But my mind went back to the times where, I mean, Sister Almond came to visit me. I, I just remember it daily because I my first surgery I remember I was in the hospital for three weeks um, you know they just could not remove the G2 from my nose they were not hearing bowel sounds and I was stuck in there I couldn't eat and you know things were just you know going slow and plus on top of it that's when I knew you know that I had cancer was just diagnosed with cancer and she visited me all the time, um, you know, bringing me encouragement. She always had a smile on her face. Um, she always had something to give me because it was, you know, I was 14 years old. It, it was getting, I was getting bored uh, in the hospital. And I think, you know, how we can in return think of someone in their time of need when they need lifted up when they need encouragement. And that's really tonight what I want you to think on tonight. Think of someone maybe you know or maybe the Lord will lay it on your heart to reach out to them. Maybe just a phone call, maybe not a visit, but just a phone call or something that you can reach out to someone that is going through a hard time, going through a sickness or a disease or needs that hope and needs that encouragement at this Christmas season because I truly believe that's where the heart of God is. The heart of God is in not being selfish and keeping it to ourselves, but it's reaching out. It's reaching out the love of God to someone that is hurting. And I want you to know there's a lot of hurting people that need the love of God and need the power of God. And I, I want this place to be a happening place. I want this place to be those that can just, you know, come and receive of the Lord and to know this is where it's at. 
The love of God, first of all, is here. The spirit of, the, of Jesus that we have in our hearts tonight, that we can be that and we can reach out. And not just when we're here, but when we're out in the battle, you know, because that's the true, that's the true test. Um, you know, how are you living your life when you leave church? Um, is is you're, you're, you know, reaching out and believing God to use you. And uh, that's what um, God is looking for in each and every one of our lives. You know, to be that, you know, it's a sacrifice. A lot of times we don't do it because maybe we don't feel like it or maybe we're tired or maybe, I, you know, I just can't do that. But when we say, Lord, here I am, I don't want to be just, you know, titled, you know, the C's and the E's. No, I want to be a servant of Jesus Christ. I don't want to just have, you know, you know, facade, but I want the love of God flowing in my life. I want the love of God flowing in your life today. Hallelujah. And allow his spirit and his power to come down. As it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3 it says remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ and the sight of God in our Father. Remembering, hallelujah. I want you to know God, God sees. He's looking for us to be that kind of people that will reach out because there's one thing. I want him to look at me and I want him to say, well done, as this scripture says. And you flip over, it talks it in the scriptures in 40. It says, and the king shall answer and say unto them, verily I say unto you, and as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Hallelujah. Look to where you can be a blessing to someone. You can reach out and give them the love of God and be that encouragement and be a servant of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can you say amen, amen. tonight? Amen.